together again praising the Lord we are together again in one accord something good is going to happen something good is in store we are together again praising the Lord we are together again together again in one accord something good is going to happen something good is in store we are together again praise in the Lord we are together again praise in the Lord we are together again Good to be together, praise, praise the Jesus. Lord. Praise this is the Lord. day that the Lord has been Hallelujah. and we will rejoice Hallelujah. and be glad in it. Jesus. This is the day, this, this is the day, day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice. And be glad. 
let the spirit rise. Let your spirit rise within me And let my feet are dancing And my heart rejoicing My mouth singing all your praise Let your spirit rise within me Let your spirit rise within me And let my feet are dancing And my heart rejoicing My mouth singing all your praise Let your spirit rise within me let your spirit rise within me And let my feet are dancing My heart rejoicing My mouth singing of your Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. What a wonder you are, you are brighter than the morning star, for you are fairer, much fairer than the lily that grows by the way, in your love is more precious than Oh 
The love of my oh, God. Yes, Jesus, 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 J
We worship in humble adoration. We in your presence, Lord. We worship in humble adoration. Oh, the lover of our souls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. What a wonder you are. Hallelujah. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Praise his name, praise his name. We worship you, God. We worship, we worship, we worship at your footstool. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bubba, 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 bubba. 
Rashatata Yanana Masu, Rico Soyo Koshata, Nico Reba Baba Yeke, Yanda Basatu Bosha Nadamane, Yele Bosayana Bashata, Yando Kusayene Kusarabashia. We worship Akasundo Bosa. We worship you today, God. We worship you today, God. Hallelujah. We worship you today, God. We worship you today, God. We worship you today, God. Oh, Spirit of the living God. We worship you today, God. We worship you today, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. No, my heart, my soul, my life belongs to you. You paid the price for me.
Alléluia. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. Alléluia. Alléluia. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. We love the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We give him all the praise yes, and all Lord. the glory and all Lord. the honor that is due unto his name. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's continue to give him praise. Hallelujah. Lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let him hear your voice today. Let him hear who he is. Tell your God how much you love him today. Tell him how much you appreciate him. Tell him who he is, what he means to you today. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give him the praise. We give him the praise. Hallelujah. Raise your hand in the presence of your God. Rico Shut up, 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 shut up
Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We worship you. We worship the King of Kings. We worship the Lord of Lords. We honor you, God. Hey, Rabashana Masi and the Kia. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Nasheke kele de bosa. Ika raba sundo de bosia. Nika taya raba kashundo de bosia. We worship, we worship, we worship. Masata taya na masoyo de bosa. Oh mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we hallelujah. Mm, sweet Jesus. Oh, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are fairer than 10,000. Hallelujah. Oh, what an awesome God you are. What a mighty God you are. Oh, we worship, we worship, we worship. It's a privilege, God, to worship you, to exalt you, to bow before you. Hanamasi Rebochata Nihesekurabashata. Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Jesus. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift your hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. And there is no one else like you. 
some good food. Hallelujah. Some good, good spiritual food. All those who are ready for spiritual food. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And we thank God today for his word that we are going to eat and we are going to be filled. Amen. So without any further ado, let me bring on our senior pastor for today, Pastor Yvonne Mulrane, clap your hands as she comes. Praise the name of Jesus. You may have your seats. Glory be to God. Well, we all know the theme for 2023, and that is new beginnings. Hallelujah. And in our new beginnings, there are some things that we will have to leave behind as we transition. There are some things we cannot go with. But God spoke to me and he said, tell my church, they need to go to another level of warfare in this new season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, my subject for today, new beginning, warfare strategies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And my text is taken from Matthew 11, verse 12. Glory be to God. And Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 18. Now, I know that many of us listen to the world news, BBC news, CNN news, news in our own nation, Trinidad and Tobago. But what God has said to me is that the entire universe has entered a new season. The entire universe. And when I say the entire universe, I'm speaking about things, people, leaders of nations, leaders of the church of Jesus Christ, even our children are not doing what they should do for their age. So we are seeing a lot of changes. The schools are not what it used to be. There is an increase of violence. The changes seen in our world today is speaking to us very clearly. And it is speaking with a very loud voice. Many of us are not paying attention. But God said to me, there is a shifting taking place in the entire universe. We see a shifting in the area of global warming. We see abnormal weather patterns. When we are in the rainy season, we get lots of sunshine. In comparison to years ago. And when we are in the dry season, we get a lot of rain. But some of us are not paying attention. We see increase of murders, increase in the area of kidnapping, gang warfare, an increase in rebellion in both young and old. We see an increase in sexual immorality. Mankind have become lovers of themselves. And they are lustful. And even in the church, men have no time for God's business. Because things have changed drastically, God is now sending out a trumpet call for change in our warfare strategies. And God is speaking to his people. And God is saying to his people, come up a little higher in your warfare. Hallelujah. The assignments from the enemy has gone to another level. That's the reality. Therefore, the church of Jesus Christ must, in this new season, operate in tactical warfare. Tactical warfare. And when I say tactical, I mean carefully planning, planning out your warfare. You are not aiming all over the place. But you aim and you take out your target. Cannot afford to be praying for years and things are not changing. So we have to get into what I call deep sea diving. So we got to be tactical in our warfare. 
Hallelujah. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I'm in my first point. Definition of warfare. Warfare prayer is a prayer technique popular with charismatic Christian denominations. It focuses on using prayer as a weapon to do battle with spiritual unseen forces. Especially in regard to one's daily life, habits, and struggles. It is prayer prayed for the purpose of raging war against unseen spiritual enemies who are bent on making us unhappy by taunting, and when I say taunting, I mean preventing our dreams and our desires. Hallelujah. Warfare prayer commonly encourages a take control attitude. So you're praying, but you're taking control. Hallelujah. We are prayer warriors are told to be bold, decisive, meaning determined, and faithful in prayer. Warfare prayers includes many eyes and we. So when we congregate and we are moving into mashup strongholds, we would not be saying I, but we would be saying we, because we are moving through as the army of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So it includes, it includes, I declare, we got to rise up and make some declarations in this place today. It's going to happen today. I decree, I bind in the name of Jesus. I overrule the plans and strategies of the wicked one in the name of Jesus. I smash up or mash up the plans of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke in Jesus' name. I counteract and contradict the plans of the wicked one in the mighty name of Jesus. I cancel the assignments of the kingdom of darkness against whatever you are coming up against. You're going to do some cancellation in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I annihilate. Meaning bring to destruction. Bring to destruction every plan of the wicked one. Do not allow the enemy to come in to your space and to your family and sow seeds. And allow those seeds to grow and bring forth fruits. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So we got to rise up and defeat the plans of the enemy. We got to rise up and defeat the plans of the enemy. Sometimes in warfare prayer, the Holy Spirit may instruct the intercessors for a period of time. To stay on the name of Jesus. So you are praying and you are just calling upon the name of Jesus. You're just calling upon the name of Jesus. You speak Jesus over your children. You speak Jesus over your ministry. You speak Jesus over your life. You speak Jesus over this nation. You speak Jesus over your community. Don't be perturbed when you stay on the name Jesus and you are not going anywhere saying anything. Stick with the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Glory be to God. Hallelujah. One way to explain the spiritual warfare is by comparing it with physical war. Physical war. Historical battles were often about controlling territories for political or economic power. Spiritual warfare is the battle for control over souls, over the souls of human beings. The devil is after your soul. It doesn't matter how pretty you may look. It doesn't matter how educated you are. The devil is after your soul. Hallelujah. He's after your soul. But in Matthew 11, it says, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence, but it is the violent that will take it by force. We are in that season. We cannot be passive in this war. If you are passive in this war, the devil will take you out. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We got to become violent church. And when I say violent, I'm not speaking about being aggressive against the enemy today and tomorrow you relax. Listen to me, the enemy don't rest. He don't rest. If he can't come after you to take you out, he's coming after your children or your grandchildren or your neighbor or your loved ones. He is always planning and strategizing how he will mess with your mind, how he will keep you in a defeated place. But my question to the church today is what are you doing to stop him? Jesus. What are you doing to stop him? The violent will take it by force. The devil will not give back to you what he has stolen just like that. He will not give back to you what he stole from your generation just like that. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. The church must recognize that she is in a daily war. And that war has nothing to do with her ability and strength to fight. It has to do with her position in Christ. Because if you are not positioned in Christ, you cannot war a good warfare. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we need to remember, before we became Christians, we were hated by the enemy. That is why he was keeping us in the state that we were in. Now we are born again believers. You think he will say, well, okay, this one passed through. Just allow them to pass through. He hates you more. Get that message. He has an additional hate for you. Mighty God. Hallelujah. I'm in my second point. Becoming prepared for spiritual warfare. We got to be prepared for spiritual warfare, church. Got to be prepared. So, in becoming prepared for spiritual warfare, 
We need to clothe ourselves properly. We need to clothe ourselves. Because we cannot go into the enemy's camp and take back anything unless we are properly clothed. Hallelujah. We must be properly clothed. So we have to dress ourselves in the armor of God. We have to dress ourselves how? Praise the name of Jesus. And we need to understand what is the armor. We need to understand what is the armor. We need to dress ourselves in the armor. And for us to understand what the armor of God is, we need to go in to Ephesians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6. And I just want to give us some information on the armor of God. So I am looking here at the belt of truth. That's the first part of the armor. The soldier is only ready for battle when he is girded with the belt of truth. You cannot be ready for battle if you have no belt of truth. The belt of truth is Jesus Christ himself. Ephesians 4.21 Isaiah 59.14-17 We must be prepared to fasten on the belt of truth. And we must be prepared to give Jehovah God the final say in our lives. Because if we do not have the final say, and if we do not understand the word of God, then we have no truth. Hallelujah. Then we have no truth. So we must all be clothed, our spirit man, we must all be clothed with the belt of truth. And the belt of truth represents the word of God and Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus Christ is the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Please note, our defenses are tied directly into the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if you do not understand the gospel of Jesus Christ, you have no truth. Hallelujah. The second piece of armor, the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness signifies God's holiness. Righteousness signifies God's holiness and perfection. And it only comes through the death of and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Over a period of time, God sanctifies the believer to become more like him. But that believer must have a good command of the word of Jesus Christ. Because when you understand the word of Jesus Christ, then you can put on righteousness. You got to know what the word is saying to you. That's why we encourage you to get into the word and allow the word of God to get on the inside of you. Hallelujah. When you know the word of God, you hold a position of righteousness. And not only knowing, but living the word. Hallelujah. The purpose for the breastplate of righteousness. Whatever you allow in your heart will be expressed in your life. 
allow God's righteousness to cover your heart. Proverbs 4.23. And it says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Try to be in right standing with God at all times. The purpose of the breastplate of righteousness is to protect your heart against sin and the attacks of the enemy. Your third piece of armor featured with a gospel of peace. Because remember, we are in a war. It speaks about our shoes covering for our feet. Without shoes, we wouldn't get far, especially if the ground is difficult to walk on. And you know the enemy can make it difficult for us sometimes. So we got to have the word of God even wrapping our feet. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Because we see, we see that there are times as we walk as believers, we will encounter some kinds of things. If our feet are not shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, we will backslide. We will walk out of the house of God. So we got to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace that we may be guided in the right direction at all times. Hallelujah. My fourth piece of weapon. Shield of faith. It's a defensive weapon. If the enemy can break you down and bring your faith to zero, then he have you just where he wants you. He have you just where, you, where, where he wants you. But faith comes by and here in the that's why we need to be in the word. And not only in the word, but we need to do what? We need to read the word aloud so we can get it into our spirit, man. Hallelujah. Faith is the shield of the believer trusting in God's power and protection. Even when the battle rages. We must remember God is able to work all things out for our good. And he is true to his promises. Our faith in God is our shield from the wicked one. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what the enemy may say or, or who he may send. Once your faith is in that place, you will pass the test and you will make it to the end. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. So we got to stand firm in our faith. Some testings may come our way that may rock us to the right and rock us to the left. But guess what? We got to anchor ourselves in Jesus Christ. Keep your faith level up. Don't allow that devil to beat you down. Hallelujah. Every time he comes up against you, raise your shield of faith. Give him the word. Hallelujah. Become defensive. Praise the name of Jesus. My fifth piece of armor, the helmet of salvation. Now the soldier's head is one of his most vulnerable areas. That is why if somebody coming to attack you, they will aim for your 
head. And when the enemy is coming after the soldier, the believer in Christ, he will seek to attack your mind. It's coming after your mind. That's why you need to clothe your mind with the helmet of salvation. Put on Christ. That is basically what the armor is about. Putting on Christ. And not taking him off to go and do what you desire to do. And putting him on when you feel that you have need of him. But keep him on. Hallelujah. Without the helmet of salvation, the enemy can penetrate and control your decisions. The helmet covers the entire head and facial area and between the eyes and the other parts of the arm that the other parts of the armor cannot reach. So you need, you may, you may have everything here. The breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. But you need to have the helmet of salvation. Cannot afford to have your mind strayed all over the place. Anchor your mind in Christ. Do some renewing of your mind. Use the word of God to wash your mind. And keep it where it ought to be. Hallelujah. Keep it where it ought to be. So a soldier in this war cannot be effective to win battles without the helmet of salvation. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Head protection is important in this fight. If your head malfunction, you will lose the battle. Hallelujah. Your sixth piece of weapon, the sword of the spirit. All other pieces of the soldier's arsenal are defensive weapons, but not his sword. The sword is a deadly weapon in the hands of a skilled warrior. So we got to become skilled to execute effectively, mash up. And when we say mash up, we are annihilating everything on sight. Don't leave nothing. Nothing standing. We moving in. Full force. I say full force. We moving in because when the devil coming after us, he just come in full force. Jesus. I say Jesus in this place. Jesus in this so we're moving in. Sword of the Spirit. I say, Sword of the Spirit. Sword of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The soldier could pierce through even the strongest defense of the enemy. That's why you got to have the word. You got to pierce because the enemy will have defenses that we as the body of Christ need to penetrate. But we got to become skilled in the word. Can't be drinking milk all the time. Got to become skilled. And you got to be ready for this war. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. The sword of the spirit represents the word of God. And you want to see that devil run? Give him wood. You want to see him run? Praise the name of Jesus. We fight back the enemy 
and penetrate him and put him to flight with the word of God, the sword of the spirit. And I am saying, get into the word and allow the word of God to get on the inside of you. The seventh weapon is prayer. The entire world will get this warfare strategy and the devil will not stop it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I say, this is war. I say, this is war. Hallelujah. Our entire armor is rooted in God's strength. Without God's presence, we are powerless in the fight. We must fight on our knees. We must fight on our knees and we have good backup support. Because Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he is there making intercessions for you and I. So he's not saying to us fight. And he's not watching our backs. Hallelujah. He is in this fight with us. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Our battles are won. When we call upon God through that mighty warrior Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You want to fight and win battles? You want to fight and win battles? Praise the name of Jesus. Connect yourself with Jesus Christ. So we have on all the weapons. So we want to look at some types of warfare strategies. I'm in my third point. So I singled out four. And that is prayer warfare. Deliverance warfare. Prophetic warfare. And word warfare. Some types of spiritual warfare involves personal battles against demons. And others involved collective fight against evil forces in this world. So we need to understand that. So let's look at prayer warfare. Through prayer warfare, we can access the divine resources of heaven and receive the spiritual weapons we need to fight the enemy. We will enable ourselves to communicate with God as we receive his guidance, his wisdom, and his power to resist that devil through our faith in God. We can bind the enemy's influences and lose God's blessings. Prayer warfare. So prayer warfare will position us to call upon God and to receive his wisdom, to receive his blessings, to receive his knowledge, to receive his understanding, not only to help us, but to help others. Hallelujah. Deliverance warfare. And the Apostle Paul would have done a lot of prayer warfare. The Apostle Paul would have done a lot of deliverance warfare. Along with the Apostle Peter. Deliverance warfare is a type of spiritual warfare involving using spiritual weapons and strategies to free people from demonic possession, from demonic oppression, and from demonic influences. 
It is a battle against the forces of darkness that keeps people in bondage, captivity, and spiritual slavery. You are a slave to evil. You try to come out, but you can't come out. You keep going back. You're doing the same abominative act over and over again. You're a slave to the enemy. And that is what he will seek to do with the children of God. He will keep you in slavery. But when you meet a good deliverance minister, and they begin to do deliverance warfare, you've got to come out. I say you've got to come out. Because Jesus Christ was the first deliverance minister that walked the earth. And I tell you, our father, he wasn't playing. When he commanded those demons to leave, they had to leave. They had to leave. They didn't have a choice. And when we put on Jesus Christ and we command those demons to leave, they have to leave. Because you are not going to them in yourself, but you are going to them in the power of the Most High. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is war. And I am not going to lose this battle. I am going to fight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to win the battle and I'm going to win the war. Say it with confidence. I am going to win the battle and I am going to win the war. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this deliverance warfare involves... Casting out demons. Breaking curses. Severing soul ties. Renouncing ungodly alliances. Identifying and addressing root causes of demonic oppression. Warfare deliverance sets people free from bondage. From fear, from anxiety, depression, addiction, and demonic influences. We're talking war today. For too long, that devil make the church believe that you can keep your depression. Hello? What is that? Why you must be serving God and you're depressed? That is not a good report. How does it make your God look? The devil will try to make God look as if he is nobody. And he have you in bondage so he looking good. But today we mashing it up. And I say we are coming together. And we are going to mash it up in the name of Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say today is my day of freedom. Come on, declare it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Today's Freedom Day. Today's Freedom Day. Glory be to God. Deliverance warfare is a critical component of the Great Commission, Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. If we are not free from bondage, we cannot bring people out of bondage. We cannot bring people out. So we got to be free. Then we can go. And liberate mankind. Prophetic warfare. And the prophet Ezekiel would have done a lot of prophetic warfare. In Ezekiel chapter 37. The prophet Elisha 
and Elijah. They would have done a lot of prophetic warfare. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings 4, verses 11 to 35. And in 1 Kings 17, the psalmist David, he would have done a lot of prophetic warfare. Observe how he addressed and dealt with Goliath. Prophetic warfare. He was sending the word to intimidate that enemy. And when that enemy was fully saturated, he took him out. Prophetic warfare is a type of spiritual warfare that involves using prophetic gifts and insights to declare and enforce God's will and purposes in the spiritual realm. That's where all those demons and they lodge in the spirit realm. So as you begin to send a word, that's why we got to decree and declare we got to decree and declare, devil, you listen to me. You will not have my children. And I'm sending it into the atmosphere. And I'm letting you know, this is what it is. I ride in with Jesus. And I need you to understand that. I ain't riding with no small fry. Amen. I'm riding with a mighty warrior. And when he said to you, back up, you got to back up. And I'm riding with him. I'm riding with him. That's why we need to send up our, our declarations into the atmosphere. What do you want from God? What changes would you like to see? Send it into the atmosphere. Send it up. I decree and declare by this time next year, I will have my own vehicle. I will have my own home. Open your mouth and decree and declare it. I decree and declare in nine days time, I will get my promotion. Open your mouth and send it up into the atmosphere. And God is going to respond. I say God will respond. But if we are not saying anything, then God has nothing to respond to. We just sit down and allow the devil to just punch at us. Some believers have become punch and bag for the enemy. So you will hear them get up and say, I get up so depressed this morning. What is that? What is that? You should be with Jesus all night long. So how could you be with Jesus all night long and you're getting up depressed? It is time to tell that spirit of depression where to go. The pit of hell is waiting on him. I said the pit of hell is waiting on you, spirit of depression. I will not allow you. Because the word of God says what we allow, God will allow. When God gave me that revelation, you know what he said to me? He said, I gave the church the keys and many of them are still waiting on me to give them the key. I gave them the keys. Whatever we bind is bound. But we're still calling Jesus to do it. He gave us the authority to do it. Get up in the face of that devil and decree and declare you will not touch anything for me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I know who my daddy is. I say I know who my daddy is. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. He rule and reign supreme. The word of God says that the hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord. My daddy's a consuming fire. Devil, where you going? Where you going? What track record you have? Huh? Your track record is to stress out people. You can't take the stress in the world and come in the church and take it. When you know Jesus Christ, what is that? 
So you are right. And God is saying, church, rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Prophetic warfare. Prophetic warfare. Hallelujah. You got to command evil forces to get out of your atmosphere. Got to command them. Prophetic warfare is a battle against the enemy's plans and strategies. And it involves declaring, prophesying God's truth and blessings over individuals, communities, and nations. Examples of prophetic warfare. Prophesying God's promises and blessings over people's lives. Bless people. Don't curse them. Hallelujah. Declaring God's plans and purposes over cities and nations. So every time we pray, we should be making some prophetic declarations. Hallelujah. My fourth warfare strategy, word warfare. Word warfare. And Jesus Christ used this strategy in Matthew chapter 4. And the Apostle Paul used it several times. It involves using God's word to combat the lies of the enemy. The deception of the enemy. It involves the speaking God's word over your mind. Using the word to pull down negative thoughts. God did not give me a spirit of fear. But a spirit of? Say it like you. Say it like you know it. So we got to work that word warfare to pull down the strategies of the enemy over our minds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pulling down every vain thought and every vain imagination, every contrary mindset. Speaking God's truth over our lives, we got to pull it down. All kinds of contrary thoughts will seek to come up within your mind, to try to lodge inside of your mind. You've got to deal with it in the mighty name of Jesus. Your mind must not be a playing ground for the enemy. What is that? He coming to kick football in your mind and play cricket. Saying all kinds of nonsense. And you just there harboring. From the time you begin to hear the negative thought, deal with it one time. I'll take you down in the name of Jesus. Wrong perceptions about others. I'll take you down in the name of Jesus. Don't tell me anything about nobody. You cannot speak truth. Why am I listening to you? What you're saying to me about them will always be a lie. So I don't want to hear you. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So we got to be careful to work these four strategies. Those of you who are not taking notes, pull it up when it is uploaded on YouTube and listen to it again. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm in my fourth and final point. My fourth and final point is 
this is war. Let me see all them Christian soldiers in the house. Wave your weapon, wave your weapon. Come on, come on, come on. I said, this is war. This is war. This is war. Hallelujah. So when you are up against an opponent in a war, before you jump in that boxing ring, what you have to do? Make a study of your opponent. Make a study. You just don't jump in and bounce around and pelt in some wild cough all over the place. You have to know if your opponent loves to hit some low blows. You have to know. So yes, you will be bouncing around, but you are looking for his hand. To see if he's coming to jab you here. To see if he's coming to hit you here. To see if he's coming to give you the knockout punch. Study your opponent. When you go to the book of Genesis, you will get a good understanding of your opponent. How he tricked Eve and Adam in the garden and so many other things he did. He is a deceiver. So you got to go into war with the understanding of the mindset of your opponent. You are not fighting any jokey devil. You will be sleeping in the night and he is up strategizing how to take you and your family down. And people who you did nothing to will be coming up against you. I say, study your opponent. So when he hit against you, you will be positioned to jab him back. Not curl up in a corner. I ain't think I want to go to church today, no? Nah? There's all kinds of things happening to me. And the opponent jumping up. Hey, I win this one. I said, this is war. I said, this is war. Anytime you come to tell me don't go to church, you have entered the wrong house. You have no place. I say, no business coming to tell me where to go and where not to go. I and you ain't no friend. I take orders from the Almighty, not from you. Study your opponent. He is ruthless, he is heartless, and he is devious. And when he comes after you, it is to kill, steal, and destroy. He has no mercy. So you know that you are coming up against an opponent who is devilish, who is wicked, evil, insensitive. So you got to be positioned in this war to fight it out to the end. That is why God says, take your warfare to another level. Were you fighting with the devil and sleeping all night? What is that? You lie down sleeping all night. And you are in a fight. And he is working all night. So when you get up in the morning, all the traps are already set. I say, study your opponent. Know when to go down and sleep. Know when to rise up and pray. Check the life of the soldiers in this nation of Trinidad and Tobago. They have their sleeping hours. And guess what? They sleep with their weapons on. And the slightest noise they hear, bam, they pull the weapon. How far is our Bibles from us when we sleep in the night? Church, we are in a war. We are in a war. We are in a war. So we got to do what? Study our opponent. 
study our opponent. Hallelujah. Study the history of our opponent. We know that he was in heaven as Lucifer. And he was responsible for all the music up there. And he was cast down. And when he was cast down, what the word of God says? Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. Why are we trying, trying to fight an enemy if we don't know his tactics, his strategies? We have to learn our opponent. We have to learn how he attacks. When he attacks and how he will attack. Hallelujah. And where he will attack. Glory be to God. So you have to make a study of the enemy. You do so by reading various accounts of the word of Almighty God. You have to read. You have to look at families who would have gone through several attacks. And how they dealt with their victories and their defeats. Study those around you and how they overcame in their own personal battles against the enemy. Listen to testimonies of brothers and sisters who went through many years of hardship and never stopped their warfare. And there are many of us here like that. Come and talk with the elders. Come and talk with the elders. We would have gone through some hard battles. But we kept the faith. And we believed God to keep us. So when you look at many of us, Pastor V, myself, we have Minister Portia. We even have my daughter there, Natiki. Minister Nadine, eh? Debbie, Sean. When you look at many of us, you could never say we have been through what we had to go through. Check us. We will give you advice. I say, but stay in the war. Don't fall out of the race. Because the devil is after your position in Christ. I said he's after your position in Christ. You're a warrior. You are a warrior. He don't want you messing with his kingdom. Shiris is going to mash up some strongholds in the kingdom of darkness. <laughs> that is why he tried to lock her down from her childhood. But God is going to cause her to rise up. Stand up, Shiri. Sabro de rebush. Caro do robosa. Me in the libras. You cool. Bouche. Jesus. Put your hands up. Right up. Right up. In a surrendered position. Librasu. Mm hmm. Take some more. Take seke rebosa. A seke rebosa. Tarabundi. I say, receive it. In the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Warfare anointed. That's right. I say you're going to mash up in the name of Jesus. You're going to annihilate in the name of Jesus. Hey. Shabande. I say you ain't seen nothing yet. For here the spirit of the Lord say you will put your foot on the neck of that enemy. Shabande. Shekaturusa. I said, This is war. Shabababandu. This is war. 
mighty deliverer. Jesus. So you got to allow men and women who have fought and won battles to mentor you. You don't want to be mentored by somebody who doesn't, who, who really doesn't understand what's taking place. You're green. You're now coming to the scene. Have not been through anything. You're not ready to mentor anybody. Because when they come with their hard issues, they're looking for answers. And you must give the answers, not only give the answers, but you must lead by example. You must lead by example. They must look at you and say, yes. See the Jesus in her? See the Jesus in him? I want that. Lead by example. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. One of the spiritual warfare strategies that we must learn as the church of Jesus Christ is troubleshooting. Troubleshooting is a form of problem solving, often applied to repair failed products or process a machine system. So you have to go in, you have to use a device and you have to test it. Many of you technicians will know what I'm speaking about so that you can pick up where the problem is at. And that is what we need to do. We are in a war. Are we facing a generational curse? Are we dealing with a soul tie? You have to know what you're dealing with. You cannot be in this war and you're aimless all over the place. So you do some troubleshooting. Father, tell me what's taking place here. I need to know. And sometimes in troubleshooting, you have to do some fasting. You have to do, because you have to zero in on this thing, this one thing that has been creating the problem. So you have to go in there and get the problem and fix the problem. You cannot be calling a demon of confusion a demon of murder. Because if you are binding up a demon of confusion and you are saying spirit of murder, he ain't going anywhere. Because he's sitting down to hear you call him by his name. And unless you can call that demon by his name, he ain't going anywhere. So you have to do troubleshooting. What am I dealing with? We are in a war. What am I dealing with? Jesus. We also have to do spiritual targeting. And that is spiritual sharp shooting. Spiritual sharp shooters always hit the bullseye. Always hit the bullseye. So spiritual sharp shooting is like, a, is like scanning. So you go to a doctor and you say, Doc, I'm getting a pain here. The doctor now have to give you an x-ray to find out what is happening on the inside there before he medicate you. 
So sometimes you may be lying sick on your bed and you think it's a physical issue and it's not a physical issue. You may think it is high blood pressure and it is not high blood pressure. When that demon gets cast out of you, you will no longer have a problem with your pressure. You may think it's gas. When that demon gets cast out of you, when you vomit him up, you will no longer have the gas pain. That's why we need to scan. Father, show me what is happening with my body. I need to know. Show me. We need to observe our bodies so that we can pray for ourselves effectively. It may not be us, but it may be a neighbor. Father, the neighbor called me to pray. And I want to go, you know. But I don't want to go and dance around. I have no time for that. Show me exactly what is happening. God can cause us to scan on the inside of individuals. I know what I'm talking about. God can show you the problem so that you can address the problem in prayer. So we the believers in Christ need to do some spiritual scanning. Because people will come to you with all kinds of issues. And sometimes you pray and do not hit the bullseye. But when you scan, they are speaking to you, Father God. Show me what is happening here. God is able to do it through us. He is able to do it through us. And he would help us to hit the target. Bullseye. Praise the name of Jesus. As I close, I want to ask Kerobosha, Jesus. There is a Nelebrasi, ke ye 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 de lebru tu yukulubosha. There is a strong presence. Of the Lord God in this place. And God says, For too long, my people have been trampled upon by the enemy. And God says, It is not about just being in a congregation and being a part of the church. But it's about being victorious in Christ to Jesus. Because you serve a God, hallelujah, who is victorious. Glory be to God. As I conclude, I would like everyone to stand. And I want you to repeat some of these warfare prayer points with me. Shake yourself. If you find you're tired, shake yourself. We are in a war and we're ready to mash up. Can't go into a battle and you're bending and you're, and you're twitching. Glory be to God. So I will say it and you all will repeat it after me. Every satanic altar raised against my prayer life, I pull you down in the name of Jesus Christ. Every demon of lukewarmness and coldness, get out of my life by the fire of God in Jesus' name. Let every demonic power chasing blessings away from me be paralyzed in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the enemy 
began to vomit every good thing he has eaten up in my life. In the name of Jesus, raise your hands and begin to get violent in this place. I break all curses of leaking blessings upon my life, upon my family. In the mighty name of Jesus, I clear my goods from the stronghold, from the warehouse of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, we're going to repeat that again. I clear my goods from the warehouse of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, let all satanic kingdoms working against my prayer life, working against my family, working against my community. Fail right now in the name of Jesus. Let all hidden arrows in my life be troubled in their hiding places. In the mighty name of Jesus, I frustrate and disappoint every instrument of the enemy fashioned against me and my family in the mighty name of Jesus let those who trouble my Israel be troubled to death in the mighty name of Jesus I scatter all evil counselors and conspirers fashioned against me and my family in the mighty name of Jesus. I scatter all evil forces shedding blood on my behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. I take authority over every satanic attack on my home, on my job, and my ministry, my family, in the mighty name of Jesus. I withdraw the staff of the office of the strong man delegated against me and my family, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every opposition to my breakthroughs crash into pieces. In the mighty name of Jesus, I stand against every faith destroyer in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I stand against every unprofitable agreement and reconciliation. In the mighty name of Jesus, I paralyze. Everyone behind the extension and expansion of my problems in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every tree of sorrow be uprooted in my life, be uprooted in my family in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the rain of fire fall on the camp of every hardened enemy. We're going to say that again. Let the rain of fire fall on the camp of every hardened enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Release your fire today, O oh God, to burn them up until they become ashes. In the Lebosa I say lebosa katarabasai. Elebosa katorobose. Yelebosa ta yelebosa. We release blessings. We break the curse. Satorobosa. Ne shakataka soto. Shakataka soto. Shakaka sata. We mash up the chains. Ne shenelebose. We 
smash up the chains of the enemy over the minds of the people of God. We go deep down inside of their bellies today and we approach. We annihilate the strongholds that has kept the people in bondage. Cannot pray, cannot worship God. We mash it up. I say if you feel something coming up from your belly, call for a bucket and free yourself from the struggle of the wicked one. We are the plans of the enemy to keep the church in bondage. Even on the YouTube, lay your hands on yourself and begin to decree and declare the Lord God Almighty has delivered me as from today, as from today. No more demonic control. I mash it up in the mighty name of Jesus. Shabababandododododobosata I say we are in a war. This is war. Shabababandodododobosa. Rababandarabasai. And you got to pull out all your artilleries. In this war, it's tactical warfare. Te shataka soto. I say tactical warfare. Aim at your target and hit the bullseye. I say sickness rocking your mortal body. That is war against you. Mash it up. Uproot it. Decree and declare every root. As every root of cancer. Every root. Come on and mash it up. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the Lebosha, Rabanda Rabasai, I say war for your children. Shabanda, war for your unborn children. War, I say Shakata Rabasai, I say Terebosha, all kinds of manic depression. Coming up on our young men and women. Many of them want to give up. Many of them want to commit suicide. I say we are in a war. If the enemy cannot catch us, he's going to come after our children. But we declare war. We declare war. We declare war. Name of Jesus. I say the church is on the winning side. Mighty deliverer. Shaban de Lebosa. I said, this is war. You have stayed at one level spiritually and you are not going anywhere. You pray the same prayer day after day, day after day. There is no spiritual increase in your warfare. We mash up that today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We uproot that spirit of Python operating inside of your belly today, blocking you from your warfare strategies. I say we mash it up. We uproot it in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ came to set the captives free. To set us free. To set us free. Take your freedom. I say, Kerebo Soto. Some of you need to go in deeper. Things are happening in the lives of your children. And you're moving around casual. You cannot be casual in this war. Pull out your weapons. Shataka Soto. Rebecca Sote. Come on in the name of Jesus Christ. Pull your weapons. And aim it at the enemy. No more bondage. I say no more depression. I say credible say. No more depression. No more depression. We got to know how to get in there. Go down in hell and take what belongs to you. 
I said he interfere with your peace. Take it back, take it back, take it back, take it back, take it back. Take it back. I said, take back your joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Shit, ni de de bo sata. Rabanda rabasai. I said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I take back my joy. I take back my joy. Ye de le bo sa. Rabande. Ye ke katorobo. I take back my peace today. I say I take back my stability. I take back my stability. My telebusha sakatorosa. Take it back. No more open doors for the enemy to come in and do as he please in your life. Come in and do as he please in your children's lives. What is that? What is that? I said, Jesus is Lord. I said, Saturobosa. Jesus is Lord. And God says it's another level of warfare. Don't war the way you used to war. The devil has grown accustomed to your warfare. So before he launches his attack, he already know what you will do. And that's why God is saying, take your warfare to another level. The devil must not know what you will do in any situation. When he comes up against you, he must not back you up in a corner. You must rise to the challenge and get in his face and say, devil, you want war? War you want? War you going to get? Because when I check it out, my Jesus never fail me yet. Never fail. Cannot fail. Cannot fail. I've been going on his strength. And I'm alive and well. Cannot fail. Hallelujah, Jesus. Kurie de le bush and rabosa. And God says, say to yourself today, I'm going to win this battle. Come on, and the Ekarabasai, convince yourself, say it again. Open your mouth and declare it, send it up into the atmosphere. So I want you to get a little more personal. Decree and declare, call that battle by name. That's right. Put a name to that battle that you desire to win and decree and declare. Set it up into the atmosphere. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm going to win this battle. This battle of Messiah, the battle of fornication, the battle of adultery, the battle of homosexuality. I'm going to win this battle. I'm going to win it. Going to win it. Because I know that my weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down and to the destruction of the strongholds of the wicked one. I am going to win. I am going to win. Do you have a battle with fear? I am going to win this battle. Come on and decree and declare it. I am going to win this battle over fear. That demon of fear and the Messiah. I'm going to win this battle in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I serve the winner man. I serve the winner man. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Uh, many of you need to wave your hands in this place uh, and decree and declare. Open the lips. Uh, open your mouth. Uh, raise your hands uh, and wave it like if you have strength in your hands. Uh, come on, the lips. Wave it, the lips. And decree and declare. The battle has been already won. Hey. Hey. Shaka Torosa. 
Let it come from your spirit, man. This battle has been already won. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is going to do it. And you are to you too. God is going to do it for you too. In the mighty name of Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. We hope that you enjoyed that message. And just in case you want to visit us well, our services are on Saturday at 3 p.m. We are located at number 66 Independence Square, Port of Spain. See you there.